Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Hey, welcome to your day off. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend. Actually, I'm sitting with four best friends today. Yeah, I'm just one of many. Yeah, How just you one of them. I just want to. We need to switch seats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, how you doing? Good, man. Big shout out to uh, we're doing a lot. We're at a, a, the loot. Uh, we're in Premier Orlando. That's all folks. We're, at, <laughs> no, we're in Orlando at Premier. So big shout out and thank you to, to Rachel, who's our contact here at Premier, um, for everything that she's done for us and um, put us up this weekend. Um, so we could do our so we could do our show. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we want to also give a big shout out to uh, to Schedulicity, who uh, sponsoring the weekend. And um, you know, we, I mean, the other three, four podcasts before this one, you've, you 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 can't say it enough mm-hmm. that they are a brand that has the hairdresser uh, in mind when yeah. they when they make changes when they create they create for you. Yeah, I mean, every their entire like funnel is through um, mainly uh, mainly independent hairdressers and, and, and salon owners. Um, but you know, you are the funnel. You know, know that if you are independent, that you are the funnel, and they're doing everything that they possibly can to make your job a little bit easier. Yep. So thank you very very much, Schedulicity, and uh, you know, keep and doing what you're doing. And, and oh, Premier, thank you, Premier. Premier yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for the waters. I know you're not hearing this, and. When you do, it'll be a month from now. But, you know, thank you for the water. <laughs> so stupid. Hey, so listen, um, here's what's really cool is that whenever we do live events, particularly when we do live events at big shows, um, our pre-talk and our post-talk is this, is that um, when we do these things, we want to dig deeper with old friends and we want to create new friends. That's honestly our only goal whenever we do that. And today we're very, very fortunate because not only do we have one old friend, but we have two old friends. And Are they um, old Old or O O L E old old friends old friends yeah yeah. you're old they are not (laughs) so anyways we so we have uh, two old friends that that we get to chat with today um and uh I mean we're just gonna kind of cut it up and um, we're gonna dig deeper I think we spent the last half hour cutting it up (laughs) we should have we should have the the record on at that point yeah it it was great conversation and it's just it's it's amazing when you know you get to go through things with people and then when you kind of reflect and you talk back about it and you know and we'll get deeper into that uh conversation uh on the podcast but it's just when you when you look back and just like you know it kind of want to go back and, and relive that a little bit because it was pretty awesome it's pretty special well, it's really really cool to do shit it's even better to do shit with friends yeah you know so and- and we got we well we'll get into that. Bring them cool. So today, so today we have Olivia Thompson, no longer Smalley, on the podcast, also known as OMG Artistry, and we have Miss Jamie Wiley again, both dear friends of ours at Jamie Wiley Editorial. Did I get that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was sweating that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're on the podcast today, and we're just going to chat it up and um, you know, answer answer some good uh some good relationship questions. She's always going to be Smalley. Sorry, I know. I was going to say. I know. <laughs> so yes. It happened early today. So, well, anyways, those voices you hear. Welcome, Olivia. Welcome, Jamie. 
Hi, guys. Everybody. Yeah, so uh, whenever I go, hey, yeah, Olivia Thompson, they're, they're like, Smalley? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Olivia or, or who? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys, oh, you know why I had to change my last name. Well, to Thompson? Well, because I got married. But for well, another reason, industry-wise, because my personal page got hacked. And when I tried to get my Instagram back on my ID, it said Olivia Thompson and not Olivia Smalley. So it was so, like TSA to get your page yes. back? Yes. So I was always nervous that God forbid something would happen on my my big page, my OMG page. Mm-hmm. And I had to have legitimate documentation and it couldn't be small anymore because my ID was Thompson. So that's mm-hmm. actually why I changed my entire branding around. Are you serious? I'm smart. Very, and that was very like, smart. Yeah. I mean, but you needed that to get the, the check or something? No. You know, t- no. Yeah. You needed to get your Instagram back. If it ever gets hacked... You have to show them identification on your uh, license or your passport, and it has to reflect the name that is on your Instagram. Our Instagram is in my like middle name. You know, as you got to figure that out, guys. Good tip. (laughs) It needs to say first and last name. (laughs) Yeah, for real though. But honestly, because I lost my first page that I built up because of that, Mm. and never got it back. Mm. Oh, really? Feel bad for me. I do. Yeah. I do feel bad Jeez. for you. Look where you're at now, though. but no, that's a really good um, tip for sure. Well, that's cool. That happened too. That's really cool. So, uh, r- real quick, like like these two ladies, uh, they attended Presley Poe and Friends as artists this year. So, like I said, it was so cool to like, you know, like we we we've designed Presley Poe and Friends for the artist, and it it's it. I hope it reflected that, but it also like. Not for the artist, but for everybody. So everybody mm-hmm. wins is kind of it. You know, if, if everybody's equal, if it's the brands, the artists, and the and the attendees. And what we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, like how do we like how do we do it equal for everybody? Because I think I think like a lot of big shows like this one and and, and and other things. I don't know if it's a if it's a full win for everyone, but you know how can, how can we do it for everyone to win? But anyway, so like I said, like for years we've been trying to get Olivia there because again we've been friends forever, and it was just really really cool to sit there with like people that you truly know, you know. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Honestly, when you guys started doing Presley Poe, that was, I manifested that. I was like, I want to be there on stage. And then I met Olivia and we instantly connected. And I was like, girl, when are we getting on stage together? And that was probably this time last year, Mm -hmm. this -hmm. time last year. And we were like, we're going to make it happen. Literally people were like, "Mm, we don't know if you'll be together on stage ever ever <laughs> ever <laughs> and th- but it, it happened because we put that out there yeah so yeah. F- for anyone listening in when um olivia and jamie that was our first time on stage together at presley poe mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that was well, it was first- magic you would have never known ne- no no i mm-hmm. i think like even as we had said it like in that time we also started to create a friendship which i think is important for anyone that's going to get on stage with somebody else. You have to have that banter. You have to have that chat, you know? And over time, her and I have just stayed connected. And and I just felt like when we did get up on stage, we rehearsed, mm-hmm. by the way. We really? rehearsed a lot. Mm-hmm. And because we had rehearsed, we knew what we were going to say. Mm-hmm. It came off so easy, right? Like same thing with branding. Any branding that has put a lot of work into it makes it look a little easy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah, Jamie and I really, really connected and and she's very well trained on stage. I mean, she's magical, magnificent. Um, I have pretty good stage presence when it comes to like, <laughs> sure you know, demanding a crowd as you guys would say. But yeah, it, it just, it really did come together. And I really think it was because we had so much prep leading up to that time. Yeah, like- absolutely. Like roast us. I mean, like I didn't get an opportunity. I, I got the opportunity to talk to to Rima and Presley, and but I didn't get a chance to talk to you guys after the show. Um, to explain your experience of the show, like even from Friday night, from 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 family meal to to the you know at the very end saying goodbye. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I definitely want to call out like leading up to the show, we learned a lot about each other before we got on stage, like Olivia said. But it was like learning each other's process, mm. right? Olivia's process on stage and leading up to stage is very different from mine. And like learning about each other and that process and really holding space for both of us in that in that arena. And then obviously coming to um, family meal. I missed it because I had to deal with my family at home. <laughs> She's having home. her own family I meals. I my own family meal, um, school buses and yada, yada. But I ended up missing it. But I never felt left out. 
ever. Mm. And then it just yeah. led into the entire experience. And for me, it was about connection. Like it was probably one of the deepest connections I've had with attendees, with artists ever. I mean, we roomed together and the, just that in and of itself was super fun. Like there's bugs. And we're like, which what bug did you get <laughs> last night? What was in your bed? They were like our pets by the end of the trip. <laughs> the stink bug. Which just adds to it. You know what I mean? So by the time you get um, there and when with everybody, it's just like, it's family. And it's family before you even really know each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was, for me, the biggest part. Well, you know, like the way that our minds are, right? Like we we think of show in like a premiere thought, right? Mm, yeah. And you see these big names. I mean, one of our artists are like literally on the front of premiere, like, and then they're in the house with us yeah. in a small town. And there's like live culture outside and donkeys and peacocks <laughs> and stuff like, you know what I mean? And we're all sitting at this like table that's probably like, like older than all of us combined. You know, it was just a very um, ground roots, like feel. Yeah. You know, and it was kind of like, let's us all like shed our armor, shed our egos, like real talk, let's laugh, let's have fun. So that was, I feel like the vibe of, of whether we were sitting at dinner or whether we were on stage, like it was a very, um, in tuned grounding moment for all artists, no matter how big you are. It, it was, it was you know, again, once again, as we, as we, what we've learned over the years is that, um, we want to do something really big, but we don't want to like kill the artist, right? Like when you come to something like, and you guys are stage artists, so you can tell me, but you know, um, you get up there, you have four on stage things, you have 18 models and like, it's just, mm -hmm. it seems like a drag. You have like a 6am call time and like, we wanted to kind of like, how can we take a, how can we remove mm -hmm. that and still have a very, very cool experience for the, now, honestly, our funnel is the attendees. What's their experience, you know? Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, we we believe that if you guys have a better time and you guys, then you you're going to deliver better as well. Mm -hmm. not and that that's, not that it's that thought out, but that that's the goal, right? And it's it's almost like you have to unlearn it. Like mm. you have to unlearn Ooh. that because many times I would be like, "Where's this? What's happening?" And then we'll figure it out figure it out and we did we did figure it out but it was a process for me being in that culture for so long that it's like okay I have to unlearn so that I can really tap into my authentic self so that I can be with Olivia on stage and, and truly come from that place and so it, it was a process and it was really um it was freeing for me as an artist and also I think too like with the prep talks that we had um and just the all over theme, I'm very technical in my mm. speaking. I'm very tangible. What are the takeaways? What are the tips, tricks, hacks, right? There was a part while we were on stage and, you know, it's all about how you make people feel in the end. Mm. That is what I'm actually learning to be more of is more on the emotional end when it comes to that kind of, you know, big sister mm. to the audience because Yes, I can show you the tips, tricks, and hacks, but education is the way you feel. Mm. It's not always about what you learn. Mm. And there were all of the feels with the stories. And, you know, there was one thing that I said that I think everyone, and I paused, I did the, the pause. <laughs> the dramatic pause. <laughs> um, was we were talking about, you know, just people online and stuff like that. And one thing I said was, if, if I wouldn't let them in my home, I wouldn't let them in my head. Mm. And that was like, everyone just like, kind of like took a step back. Everyone and did the, mm. they like, <laughs> the they, I'm like, and I'm like, chew on that guys, mm -hmm. chew on that thought, you know? And it, and I think, you know, it's so funny because they're like, yeah, I learned technique and, you know, I learned upstyling, but like that one, I'm going to take that with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. That's not just education advice. That's life advice. Yeah. So I loved hearing, you know, and everything I, you had to say. Honestly, like, when you create that experience for them in um, a program, you have 90% more retention, 90% mm. more retention as an educator when you're creating those experiences in programs like that. So it's like, she's a master. I mean, when she okay. creates experiences like that and then throws it over to me, I can throw a zinger down and, and get them all cracking up and then, mm. and keep it moving. I think that's why we were so magical mm. because we had tangible 
um, things that they can take back behind the chair. But then also we made them cry. We made them go, oh, what? And then we made them laugh at the same time. That's amazing. You know, it's 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 weird. Like, and, and I'm sure we had the conversation with you guys last year. Like, we're trying to sell an experience and you don't have words to, to, to describe the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's so hard. Like, you and I have talked about years about, like, no, this is different. I can't, mm -hmm. why is it, I, I, it's just an experience. I'm like, that's not enough words for it. You know, but everybody leaves with like, yeah, that was an experience. And truly, you, you, you don't know until you experience it. Like, and putting it into words for other people, you're like, you just have to come. Yeah. That's even you just have to come with family meal because there's so many people and there's so many young hairdressers that look up to you guys. So we said, you know what, family meal is is going to be a way for those young guys to to get that out of their system, get to feel like they, they belong, to be with you guys, to network with you guys and so that way when we do that the next day with the show the all struck's already gone you know what mm -hmm. i mean they feel like they're a part of the vibe so they can really focus in and help out and, and things like that and uh and in that way and with family meal it, on that friday night is that so we can all bond it's like a family picnic a barbecue so everybody all the stylists the artists the the you know the people are that helping just relax we're all together we're in this together that way, I think it makes Saturday and Sunday so much more mm -hmm. pleasurable, you know, mm -hmm. pleasurable. Yeah. yeah. And everybody gets to kind of know each other. You know that um, that demonstration where they have like the big rocks, the small pebbles, and then the sand? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, I think when everybody like kind of like showed up, it was like the big rocks were like the, the superstars and, you know, and then, but the As sand. As walks in the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a pebble, dude. I'm a pebble. Okay. There were some bigger people, way bigger people than me. But it's like, you know, the sand was there, the people were there, and they just kind of didn't know what to expect, right? Yeah. But it takes, and I'm going to give you guys credit, it takes curation of artists to also set a tone. You can't have a bad apple. You know what I'm saying? No, so no, no, kudos no. to you guys for those people that can be more vulnerable, more open and readily available to have, to allow the sand to have access to the rocks. You know yeah, what I'm no, saying? A hundred percent. Like, and, but, but that's like, I mean, literally that's the conversation that we're having internally as we speak. Like, who fits? Yeah, what, correct. Who fits? Not what, what everyone makes fits. Sense? Not no. everybody fits. Not no. everyone wants no. to give that access. And that is you know what, fine. You know what? If I'm not going to let him in my house, I'm not going to let him in my show. <laughs> like, but it's but it's true, right? Yeah. Like, like we have a list. I will never, ever divulge it. But, you know, yeah. we have a list of people we won't work with. Yeah. Like they just, and not for anything other than it's just not going to work in this environment. Yeah. Because this is a very, thing. very mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. environment. This, this, this is Christmas morning for us, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and we don't want anyone to like screw up our Christmas morning, you know? No Grinches. No, no Grinches, Grinches allowed. Only Santa Clauses. Only like. Santa Clauses. Um, and we, we couldn't continue this conversation without thanking Babyless. Babyless, <laughs> Babyless Pro. <laughs> Babeless Pro. Babeless Pro. Let us correct you. Without thinking, yeah. So I mean, they stepped up big time this year. I mean, not only just bringing you guys in, but 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 just stepping up once again for our um for our for the attendees. Yeah. You know, they stepped up big time. Their stage is by far the largest stage at Premiere. Oh yeah. On, like next to like main stage, which we are actually next to main <laughs> stage now, which is kind of cool. Um, and we're the first booth right when you walk through the door. And this year, what I love is we actually had our um, our now annual uh, meeting of the minds, and we have actually curated now barber and cosmetology into barberology, which is now we're going to be one team, which is huge mm. because I just got a bunch of new brothers and sisters, brothers and I'm and so sisters. happy about it. Check so it our team is massive. Mm -hmm. um, they are superstars, and when we had our um, what would you call it? Like our meetup? Like a retreat? Like, like the, a, thing yeah. North, the thing in North Carolina? Yes. North Carolina. yes. Like a month before, like in March. We did. It was the coolest thing ever because we Second did competition. You know, it was, <laughs> it was cool to be with my other family. <laughs> um, we had no like competitions <laughs> oh, with the barbers cool. and the cosmetologists mm -hmm. and we had a theme. Um, I mean, we had parties, we had superlatives. Um, it was, it was a really great experience. And, you know, coming from, other teams, we used to do retreats back in the day. I haven't really had like a retreat with a team in a, in a, in a minute, you yeah. know, I have one Since coming COVID. up with, with Joyco, but it's, it was cool to have 
so many people that I've seen on, on mm-hmm. and it really, it's the same industry, but it's a different industry. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're like, no, we are together because mm-hmm. barbers are using cosmetology tools. And I Which know that I use a lot of mm-hmm. barbering tools as a cosmetologist. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're, they're bridging the, gra- the gap, which yeah. is really cool. Well, it's yeah. cool, like being at ABS and watching all you guys up on stage together. And I think, I think they said that, that was the first time. That was that- the first time. It was yeah, the first time that you guys were up for yeah. like yeah, um, barbers and, and and stylists up together, which is cool too. You know, do you find it like I don't want to use the word difficult, but is there a challenge like working with a barber in the sense of just like more like lingo or 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 the like words for, or whatever? For me, like I, honestly, when I came on the brand two years ago, it was separate, like Olivia mm-hmm. was saying, and I was like, why? Why are we separate? Everybody, it's all hair. it's all here we're all touching people it's all here and so getting on stage and then the barbers would be watching i'm like if you touch head a head or hair you're styling hair even if you're a barber with short hair um and then so bridging the gap has been incredible not only because we get to experience what they you know experience behind the chair but vice versa and then also we get to learn from each other and Everyone is incredibly talented Mm -hmm. and the walls come down. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, So for me on stage with the barbers, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, we're passing it back and forth, cracking up and things like that. So hair is hair, whether Mm -hmm. you're doing short hair, long hair, editorial, bridal, it doesn't matter. And that was the other cool thing was um, during this, we also did education with the other barbers and with cosmetologists. And then we did- So like you like taught a class to the barbers? um, So I taught, we did a a social media panel. Mm -hmm. So I was on the panel myself. Well, that doesn't count because that's just like, you know, know, whatever. Patty. Well, Mm -hmm. no. Well, that was good because we could say like what we're doing currently Mm -hmm. to help the other artists, Mm -hmm. to teach them- Social media, right? Yeah. And then Sophie had a class that I took on barbering. Los, um, she had an amazing bridal. class. I had barbers in my program as well. Yeah, about bridal, and so they're, they're like, bridal. they're like, I've never put hair up, and I was like, that's okay. So we're gonna do this it. is for up donors too. Up donors, you can be oh! an up donor even if you're an up donor. I've been an up donor my whole career. Of, of <laughs> what? That is awesome. Until you I take my that. class, so. <laughs> <laughs> then you're a doer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was amazing too. Like, Talk about Los. I love Los. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything, great. everything about such him. a yeah, just an amazing individual. Mm-hmm. You know, not only is his skills like legit, mm-hmm. super legit, but He's legit as a person. Yeah. Mm. I, I like, he said one thing that just, it's so obvious, but it just blew my mind that he will pay models to be somewhere because that's his art. That's his craft. That's his work. He and I'm like, show. he does it all the time, you know? And, and he's like, I need a guarantee. And he's like, I'm also a content creator. You know, mm-hmm. I want, I'm, this is not just for right now. This is what lives on my social media channels mm-hmm. as well. And I'm like, that's such an elevation of an artist mm-hmm. that that mind frame, you know, and even today, um, d- giving kudos to other brands, like I was walking around the model prep room and I was like, damn, they got whole photo shoots in some of these rooms. Mm-hmm. They got like marquee lights. Like I, I like to look in a different lens to be like, how can we as artists continue to like up the ante, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not be complacent and, and relevancy is a huge thing. Everybody's kind of just like this to the top vibes because they're worried about their relevancy. Right. Sure. And relevancy is you just always showing up, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what that looks like, small, medium, big show, large, it's just showing up. You know, I do it socially a lot. Mm-hmm. I'll do it at shows, but it's really being intentional. So I actually made a list this weekend because if you guys have ever been to a show, if you guys have ever been to a class, I highly recommend writing down three intentions of that because when you get on in these shows, it's so overwhelming. You just like walk around, you just want to shop, you just get distracted. Like my intention is to create more friendships, um, to network with some of the brands that I've been wanting to create connections with. And then it's also to learn the language of the other Babelist artists and how they speak about the product so that I can make that my own to be able to have better stage presence for Mm Babelist. So like if you go to a show, write your intentions down Mm -hmm. because you could get in the mix so fast and you won't even know what you're doing. As a matter of fact, if you don't write them down or you don't have intention, you will get. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt. There's just the energy is so high and that's all wonderful. 
But you know, what is it just energy? Like, and then you, you go home you, and you're you like, take that energy home. What did you. I do? What did yeah. I do? You know, it, I'm sorry, but everyone is in charge of their own education, right? Mm. If you're in a class and you're like, oh, I didn't really learn much, and they, you know, show everything, it's like, well, was your intention to learn one thing? If if you didn't get your answer, did you even ask the question? Did you go out of your way to maybe take them to the side at the end of the class because there's one thing that you see that they're doing? You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you are in charge of your own education. How like, is it? Okay. Um, like it's such a, for the lack of a better word, uh, Babelis has put together like Babelis Pro has put together such an incredible, um, almost like a dream team. Mm, I second that. You know, like every face you look at, you're like, oh, you're doing shit. Like it's a whole mm-hmm. team of doing mm-hmm. shit. Mm. Right, like everybody's like, and everybody's signing the best of the best. They yeah. are, but also within that best, and this is the first time I think I've said I might be lying, but this is the first time that I've kind of seen like everybody owns their own space before they mm. got on the team, and now like there's this other space for these these great artists mm-hmm. as well. Like nobody's there that isn't like independent on it. If that I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but. and I I love that it's a collection of artists too. You know, so like Los has his artistry. Olivia with social media and her artistry and everything that she does. And, and then we have bridal and we have cutting and finishing mm-hmm. and barbers. Like there's a corner of the industry. It's covered on this team. That's for sure. You know? and it's so cool. That it's a tool company. Cause they can do that. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like liquid companies is kind of hard. Otherwise you have 18 million skews. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, to, like for everybody, but, but also with that and where the magic really lies, Jamie, is that, What's for everyone is for no one, but but Babelis has somehow kind of figured it out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, like. There's this great quote that I that I think about a lot. John Stossel from 2020. Mm-hmm. He goes, he's talking about like a, a a state park, and he goes, that that belongs to everybody belongs to nobody, mm-hmm. you know. And Babelis is kind of what they they're saying. Oh, we're for everybody, and they're actually creating it because it's not that it does. It, it belongs to all of us. Mm-hmm. There's like like some ownership in that as well. I don't know if that makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and like. You know, not every, you know, artist or not artist, but um, hairdresser or barber is going to sit down and identify with one single person. You know, you have to have that collection of, of people so that you can be like, wow, I really identify with their what they're doing and what they're doing behind the chair. Because um, if you don't, if everybody's the same. My, my husband, Aaron, actually said a word the other day. And it's called group thinking. So they basically say you put people in a room for too long, it's, it creates group thinking, which is what you want to avoid mm-hmm. because then it's one voice. You don't want that. Mm-hmm. You want people doing their own thing, mm-hmm. right? So and then you could come back mm-hmm. and be like, hey, I saw an architect using this technology that we could bring to the beauty industry, right? Mm-hmm. Like that is what I like is there's not necessarily group thinking with Babelist. Everyone has their own individual voice. They have their own individual thought and everyone is so more than willing to share. Yeah. Mm. Every time I always come to this and I, I will sit with people and I just, mm-hmm. I'm like, just, I try to be more interested than interesting. You know, like I try mm-hmm. to like, ask questions and like really figure out like what they're doing instead of just and talking that's about so special. Yeah. It's really, really special and unique I, that I've found in the industry is that um, we get to be ourselves, but also as a collective. Does baby list, do, do they uh, encourage the sharing or is it just the pe- it, people's it naturally nature? Happens. Yeah. I think it just happens. Like we yeah. get on a call and everybody just unmutes and talks yeah. and nobody's you embarrassed. Doing? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. or shying away mm-hmm. from a dumb question. Like nobody makes anybody feel dumb. Like we just that's, say it, that's you awesome. know? We, I love this. What are you doing? How are you doing that? What camera are you using? Yeah. Um, I DM people all the time. I'm like, Sophie, Sophie. what camera? <laughs> yeah. What are you what is that? Oh. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And that's you know really what's funny. even like, cooler and I'm going to like call myself out here is like, I have idolized all of these people like Same. in the industry, Olivia. I never thought I would be next to Olivia on a stage or what? sitting in what? a pot. Of course. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, so it's really, or sharing a room with, or sharing a room, <laughs> or sharing a room. but no, truly. And it, it, um, for so many years, I, it was, I was looking up and manifesting and working at the same time to be like, that's going to, I'm going to be with those people someday. And if you write it down, tell it to somebody else and work at it, it will happen. Mm. Um, but that's been my journey. And look at you know that main stage. I did. did Did you you know know that? that? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
I did not know oh, that. Like the love bombs here oh being dropped God. on the podcast. That's Speaking crazy. of love bombs, you know who I loved, but I fell in love with at at, at Pussy Bone Friends? Mm. Ira. Oh, oh, he's so good. The, like I love the him. drop of and the kabuchi like drop. Oh my, oh, that was cool, God. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was cool. That was beautiful. You know, they, uh, to talk about the show some more, that we, for 30 years, look, nah, 25 years, I've been in the industry for 30 years. So for the last 25 years, I'm like, I am so sick of house music and rap as being a represent mm-hmm. representation of every single event that you go to. I don't care if you're going to like an education event at the Redkin, how, what's, it, what's it called? Up in New York, that place. Exchange. Redkin exchange, 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 thank you. Whether you're there or wh- wherever you are, it's always the same droning kind of like music to mm-hmm. me. And and last year, a year ago, we go. You know what? When we do our show, we want to do it the opposite. We want to like we want to kill the music. We want to like we want it to be like ethereal and like 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 really calm music. And to be honest, I didn't. I wasn't super confident we could pull I was it say, off. That's a risk. It's super. A risk. It's a super risk. And here's what happened. So we're standing backstage as the curtain is up, and the music starts. And my fear was that someone would get loud because at that point, because we were trying to create this atmosphere, you can't be like, shut the fuck up. You know, like you can't do that. Right. So like it's either working in the moment or we've lost the evening. Mm-hmm. Right. And it was like okay. seconds. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting backstage and when the music went and when the music dropped and, and the place hushed, mm-hmm. like that. It was like so that. powerful. Dude, I, I started bawling in the back. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, there was oh, a, it happened. a lot of people were crying. Did you mm-hmm. see that? No, no, because we were backstage. It was a a lot of people in my area were quite emotional. It was an emotional experience. Just from like the, 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 like. But the, him actually doing this. You guys got to explain what's happening. (laughs) What happened? So, so what we did is we, it's called a kabuki drop and everybody has seen a kabuki drop. And what it is, is is it's a screen that drops from the stage and it reveals something behind the stage. So what we did is we backlit Ira and Ira, and by the way, he, it was the most beautiful hand dance I've ever seen, you know? So then we, um, we, we, we again did some like really like slow ethereal kind of like almost meditative kind Mm -hmm. of music. And, and he hand danced that haircut. He did a haircut, but he was just illuminated as a shadow or as a, 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 a silhouette. silhouette. He was just illuminated as a silhouette, and then at the end, um, at the end of his dance, his hand dance, um, the the kabuki drop happened. So the sheet ha- drops, and then um, and then the the model that he used was was actually a dancer too. So then, uh, not a pole, an aerial dancer. She mm-hmm. was an aerial dancer. So then she did like this this beautiful dance um, after that, and it was amazing that again my fear was that if we dropped the music, if we did something like this, that People would lose interest, but I think it just increased the interest. Mm-hmm. You know? I agree. And then Tony and I had to follow. Tony, Katie, and I had to follow that. <laughs> right? And then you're like, now what energy do you do? Because then at that point, we had to like thank everyone for being there and all that kind of stuff. But well, I got, got up there with their attention. Yeah, I got up there with a wet shoulder. <laughs> oh, for me crying? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was cool. It was really cool. Like it was like I can't tell you like like for a year I was losing sleep. Can can we pull this off? Mm-hmm. And then when it happened in the moment, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. damn it. not taking any credit for it, but like, oh, it does work. Mm-hmm. I also want to mention that they had someone doing sign language throughout the entire, mm-hmm. the entire show. So everything I was saying, everything Jamie was saying, everybody, they had somebody signing to a group of people. Yeah, so to back and that, that was so, amazing. So to back that up, we had 10 deaf stylists that were in the room. And, um, and believe it or not, if you're listening, and there's a lot of deaf stylists across the country. And, um, and we're friends with, with one of the deaf stylists. So, you know, she was like, you know, it'd be really cool if we could do this with a, with, with a signer. And just by chance, Presley had worked with Thomasina at Provana um, before. So, uh, Presley was like, I've got someone. So then that's when we brought Thomasina in. And then, um, and then Kitty, who's the deaf stylist that we know, she just started reaching out to all, to uh, a lot of her deaf um, friends and then, um, and they, they showed up and it was cool. It, it, that, mm-hmm. That's, I'm, I'm really proud of that too, because I don't know if they're actually Kitty just signed with Pravana, shout out to Pravana. But, um, but I've never really kind of seen that at a hair show and like that there's such a large community that's being underrepresented mm-hmm. um, is, is very cool. You know, one thing that she had said that I thought was really important was um, creating a community that can communicate. And one thing she said, so anyone who's listening right now that makes Instagram videos, make sure you have captions yeah. on everything that you do because it also helps people to understand. It opens up an entire community. I do it anyways mm-hmm. for just Same. hitting every point of communication, but I didn't really think of it 
like that. And when she said that, I was like, wow, like what a great point. And I thought it would be useful for everybody listening right now to make sure you put captions in all your video views. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 and in either like you can go through a caption app, which is awesome and looks sexy and stuff, or, you know, just through the reels, they have a, they have a little, they have a caption. By the way, Instagram, if you're listening, which you're not, but if you're listening, like with the reels captions, can you make them better? Totally. Like they're so like, there like there's so many. Well, there's newer options on other apps. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, That's now it it's yeah. Do you, yeah. you do you use a caption app? Which one do you use? I do. I'll use CapCut a lot. Oh, and you do your captions there? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I use Opus. Oh. By the way, big shout out to Opus. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to CapCut. Hit me Cap up. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, Opus is if we're doing like, that. We're, so like, we're, we're <laughs> battle. I know, right? So uh, with Opus, like I'll upload this podcast and it'll pre-cut it. Like it'll cut me out like 25 like different clips, like under 30 second clips. Mm-hmm. And then it adds the captions in color. Look, you'll see it right here. Look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right there. That's and a great tip. It, it's, re- it's really cool. Um, it's a... Uh, it ends up being a couple hundred dollars a year, but 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 the value that it brings me and the time. And here was the thing before before I started using this app, like I would bang my head against the wall. Like I know what 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 should I clip? What thirty seconds in this one hour should I clip? Mm-hmm. And then I could listen to a podcast three times, which now I've wasted three times doing it, three hours doing it. And like it, sometimes I'm like I just can't find it, you know. And then you just put up something just because. So what but I also tell you, um, you know, viral score. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's uh, once you once it clips it, it gives you a viral score. So it says the, these are these keywords were said, and these are like you know like viral words or, or whatever. However, it does. is it AI based? Like how yeah, does it know? It's totally AI yeah. based. Yeah, it's cool. Can I tell you guys something really scary? And I tested this. Is this about this. the basement? This it's about AI. AI. <laughs> it's it's about AI. AI. <laughs> um, there is an app called Captions, mm-hmm. and you can read a script. And it, you can write any caption you want, and it will sound very, very similar to you, to your voice. Oh, yeah. I've heard about this. So it's called Captions is the app. Um, the, the, I, the AI that they're using is another company, though. So on yeah. this application, you read a script for about maybe 90 seconds. I want to do that. And <laughs> then you could write whatever you want, and it'll say it in your or voice. Or you can have AI write it in so, you want. There is, so I made a video. Um, and you know, like if anyone does do voiceovers, you know, you have to, it's like, yeah. I have to be well caffeinated. Mm-hmm. The weather has to be good. No mm-hmm. one needs to be talking. Like it's a yeah. whole yeah. thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I'm just trying to get a video out there, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this AI. And it was scary accurate. I would say it's probably, it doesn't have as much inflection as how I would well, speak. Well, you speak with a lot of inflection. So, well, you got to make sure your script isn't with inflection as well, just so you know. Like how you actually oh, talk, you have to up. read it. Mm-hmm. So I did it. It was about, it was a 30 second video and I ended up posting it on my Instagram and not one person didn't know it was me. Mm. Not one person. It was so, your face wow. and everything? Uh, no, it, it was, was like um, a voiceover. It was like a tutorial. Yeah, it was a voiceover oh, well, or that, whatever that, it was. That's or a maybe, fair, that's a fair cheat there. Or maybe maybe it was like you know how I do all my organization hacks and stuff. Yeah, like it yeah. might have been like one of those or something that I felt needed a voiceover, but it wasn't like of of importance. Like I'm only going to do a thirty second. Let's see if anyone notices. But. It saved me so much I'm time. I'm going back. I'm going through your videos now. And I'm oh, going to be like, this I is AI. Oh, this oh, is, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This AI is, OMG. This, oh, I love that. <laughs> this is the test. Mm. So if you're listening in, you've got to go to OMG Artistry. It's only one video. It's only one video. And you're going to scroll down. And you're going to watch her videos. And you're going to figure it out. And then, you, and then, and then <laughs> you're going to then you're gonna tag it. Or yeah. what should they and tag? Then, oh, I, here's AI, AI OMG. OMG. Yep. <laughs> All yep. right. And then if you find it, We'll give you a Babyless Pro tool. <gasps> oh, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, down. Sorry. Hey, that's it's happening. <laughs> yeah, done, done. So what mm-hmm. happens if a thousand people find it? Well, the first. The first. It's oh, the be. first. Sorry. Right. Gotta be the first. <laughs> Olivia, show me so you can send me a tool. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we got a cheat sheet. Oh. Cheat sheet. Yeah. Cheat 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 cheat. But you know what? It worked, and I'm I'm not mad at it. I'm it's, not mad at it at all. That's awesome. It scares me a little bit that. I could have somebody recreate my voice. Mm-hmm. It's now on the interwebs. Um, I have to have a code work with my family mm-hmm. now that it's not me, <laughs> but they need a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. Somebody's calling. Can yeah. I tell you, can I tell you a very funny story? No. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Just okay. kidding. It's not that. I mean, it's funny, like weird, funny. So when my daughter was young, we had, um, so like if she ever went to a party or something and there was something going on at the party and she wanted out, mm-hmm. she would call and give us a code word. Mm-hmm. Right? What was the word? We'll get there. Okay. So we share this with our best friends, Tony Stewart and family, and they go, wow, that's a great idea. So Tony's daughter and Tony's wife come up with a code word and um, his daughter calls his wife in a panic, screaming the code word. <laughs> She forgot what the code word was. Oh my gosh. You're like, it's supposed to be secret. <laughs> You're supposed to be discreet. <laughs> hey mom, did Casey call? What? Oh, why would Casey call? Mom, did, did Casey call? So don't forget your code word. I will not forget <laughs> make, my make sure you're Actually, out. we have a code word tomorrow on stage between me, mm. Jacob, and Hawk. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, continue. So it would be oh, like, passing the mic? yes, mm-hmm. instead of what are you doing over there? What are you doing? Oh my God. <laughs> Is that your pet peeve? That's Olivia's pet peeve. I have a few. Right I have a few. Oh, have let's a go few. through your pet like, peeves. Jamie, these uh. are my pet peeves. <gasps> what did I say? What was this do not for? do these. Oh, I have a whole notebook of every, <laughs> wait, what, what did I, I What were my pet oh peeves? Oh my God, you're such a bougie um, beige. But, what but they're doing? valid and they're professional. there? Yeah. You're finishing up and you're like, oh, what are you doing over there? Don't say that. It's just. What's the pass off? So what's your preferred pass off? Uh, well, Jake, I'm going to continue, continue, continue. I'm going to continue this section. Yeah. I'm going to be like, as you know, as I'm continuing it, I'm going to start on the right side. And then so, they, they, okay, they so know then my partner. Got yes. It. So and we know this, the order. What of if they weren't paying attention and they didn't pick up on continue and it was silence. Then I'm going to say, continue, continue again. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you know, continue, but I told them, continue. I told them that you guys are going to pick up on it because I'm going to go silent. I'm yeah. not going to do yeah. a run on sentence. I'm going to yeah. say it and then I'm going to go silent. And mm-hmm. if you hear me silent, because we know the order of operation, right? right? Then they're going to obviously know and the body best. language too. Gotcha. You know, you're, yeah. You're, and then you, you, and that's a part of the look. That's a them. part of the art. Because you're passing it to them. Yeah. So a lot of it's body language too. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, if you're speaking, a lot of times you'll step forward when you know you're done speaking or you're about to finish, you start to move backwards. And then the next person will move forwards too. So, so it's a lot of body did you guys language. Do that on stage we together, did do that. yeah, we did. we did do that. How do, well, hold on, but I look yeah. at it. But how do you do it? Like with when you're like behind a model. I had a mannequin head. She mm-hmm. had a model, but, but just in general, that, just generally. that portion is like in the intro and the out, and then the oh, ending. Got it's it. like yeah, 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 it's yeah. like you know the, that kind of flow. Uh, once you have your then pass back and forth but also i like i like what you were just saying because there was some times like even when we were on stage for presley poe and friends i was almost done with my technique Mm -hmm. so what i would do is i'd go into kind of like um coach mode right Mm -hmm. and i'd kind of do the walk out i would Mm -hmm. talk i'd use my hands Mm -hmm. i'd interact whatever it was and then i would recede and Mm -hmm. then she would know it was her time to and those are great moments for, for like sound bites too for mm-hmm. her social media, right? So she was able to go up, give those um, tips. I like to call them like little sound bites that you can, you know, pass out on social media as well. So we were, yeah, it was, we had a good, I'm going to toot. We're tooting our horn. We're tooting. Bah, bah. Beep, beep. <laughs> I mean, you should, but you're not tooting your horn because I think that anybody that's listening in that, that wants to do stage work, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think it's, it's just good to know that, what well, a it's good to know that you're a team up there and that you're not two individuals, you know, and that you can have an individual voice. However, you're a team up there, and and for and for it to be absorbed properly, mm-hmm. that it that you have to you have to operate as a team, you know. And, and we know how this happens because we all watch TV, we all watch movies. So like it's the same kind of techniques about and what feels unnatural on the stage looks natural in the seat. Mm-hmm. I did one thing that was new, so I. I have a program called Educate with Influence. So I help educators become influencers and, you know, proper influencers become educators. Mm. And I teach this in my classes. So I actually bought a uh, a mic, like the little mics you get off of Amazon, and I put it on my body. And then I had my cell phone recording us mm-hmm. because oh. when you're on stage, all you hear is echoing. Like if you're recording it from an iPhone, you hear echoing. People lose attention when they hear bad audio. If your audio is bad in a video, you've lost them. So to get those sound bites that Jamie was talking about, I had my mic right on my shirt or on your belt, your tool belt, and it'll pick up those. It will? Those one-liners. Yeah, it does. Is it just the clip-on ones? That you yeah, get for the like little ones. Bucks? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so you plug the receiver into the cell phone and mm-hmm. then you clip the microphone on How far you. was your cell phone from it? It was, it was pretty good distance. And how's it was, the audio? It was great. It yeah. was fantastic. Wow. And too, like you can yeah. utilize that behind the chair too with your clients. Like you can take 100. this advice and, you know, plop a mic on and then, um, you know, utilize that there. On that same note, I saw something at Presley Poem Friends that I've never, ever, ever seen. And I thought it was brilliant. Mm-hmm. And that was Rima mic'd her model. And then she did a consultation with her model yes. on the hello. Yeah, so good. I was standing so- next to Emily, um, who was our education manager, and she was like, What is happening? It was it was brilliant because it was it's real life. It's what's happening behind the chair. And I think we all were like, We're learning. We're learning right now. <laughs> yeah. And it can't be scripted like that kind of thing. No. Like, like, like as if you're selling authenticity, mm-hmm. have a real conversation with, with, with mm-hmm. your model or, you know, I, I, and honestly though, like the one thing that is really difficult to talk about is the conversation with your client, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can talk about, oh, you need a consultation. Here's the rules for a consultation, but that's not a conversation. It's not the same. You know what I mean? But to do it with somebody who's actually mic'd and isn't like, mm-hmm. you know, speaking into your mic. Especially I thought it was for great. texture. Like especially, especially for, texture, yeah. for texture and just really um, honing in on the the wants, the desires and the needs, right, of textured hair, because oftentimes that's not always addressed behind the chair or, um, you know, it really empowers the client. Yeah. It really does. And she was amazing. How, how, how the, I mean, babyless, are they going to. I mean, they should reach out to her. I, I'm thinking, you know, I, I mean, know, yeah, we I, know. I looked team. over at Emily and I was like, hmm. You know, I think she, yeah, she, she would blend in with all you guys perfectly. I would love. Uh I think the hookup, I think the, the, the hang up is she's Canadian. I think Mm -hmm. there's just like different, like I know, like, like what Schwarzkopf has like a Canadian team Mm -hmm. and they have this team. Mm -hmm. I think it it probably has to do with like tax. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, but all those, all those teams are separate, you know, like, like the Canadian team. I mean, Babeless Pro has teams all over the world. Like Australia, they have an Australian team. Sure, but but she doesn't. But you don't want her on the Australian team. You want her. We want her on the USA, (laughs) USA, exactly. Yeah, 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 she she's wonderful. And if you're listening, in hair by Rima is just Mm -hmm. she's second to no Mm -hmm. one. You know, she's just she's brilliant. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely amazing, amazing artist and just an amazing person. I mean, see her work, you know it's her work. You know, yeah, that's that's hair by Rima. You know it. Yeah, yeah, it's that, a brand. When you scroll, when you scroll it, like mm-hmm. you're right, you know, like oh, oh, that's definitely, that's definitely you know? and, and the, there's honestly like, I don't want to call anyone out, and I'm not going to do that, but like there, there's only a handful of people where when you scroll, that's like oh, that's their work without seeing the name, mm-hmm. you know, it, and that that's it. like you said, that's that's the brand mm-hmm. right there, and that that's the gift, man. Yeah, it was it that's was so cool, kind of hanging out. That's the, goal. that's the goal. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. That, that's I'm figuring goal. it out. I'm All still right. figuring. Talking it out. about goals. <laughs> What are your goals? Hmm. Whoa, loaded question. Uh, to, you know what's crazy is I had, you know, goals. Every year I set out new goals and um, and I switched the verbiage of that, right? Because I'm like, if I don't reach that goal, I feel wicked bad. Like, I just feel really bad about myself. And so I turned it into like intentions. Like, what is my intention for the year? Right. I, I intend to do X, Y, Z for the year rather than a goal, because um, for so many years as a young stylist, I was goal oriented. And when I am such I'm so motivated and when I wouldn't hit that, I'm like, dang, I didn't get that. And it would affect me in my mental health. Like, truly, it wasn't until probably COVID when I had to take a step back and be like, you know what, what are my intentions? What do I truly want out of this next year? And then writing those out and then um, basically going backwards to it. Like, what do I have to do in the next, you know, 12 months and breaking it down from there, um, taking actionable steps. And that truly changed the game for me is taking actionable steps each month to hit that goal. Um, So that that was a long answer. No, it wasn't. That was a long answer. That was was brilliant. It was absolutely Um, beautiful. I was reading this thing. Actually, it might have been a meme. might have been a video on TikTok. I don't know. Um, But there was a guy speaking and he said that um, his confidence is built through his intention, not through other people's validations. Mm-hmm. And I thought, <clears throat> uh, boom, if that's not mm-hmm. a boom, mm-hmm. I built my confidence through my intentions, not other people's validations. Mm-hmm. So it's, it was such a powerful thing. I'm glad I remembered it. Cause that those are the kind of things I usually like, you know, tongue tie through. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, I, 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 I felt it. You know, yeah. like you go, oh, yep. mm-hmm. oh. I don't know how to do it quite yeah. yet, but you know, we'll get there. You know, it's there. Yeah. Chewing on it. We're that. noodling on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. will you guys get back on stage together this year, you think? Oh, <gasps> yeah. Fabulous Pro, if you hear this, <laughs> get us please. in. That's, Come on, Emily. That's you've my goal. The magic. That's your intention? <laughs> that's, that's, that's my intention. intention. That's, that's my intention. goal. So I was doing some reading, always reading, always researching. Um, they say, I don't do like five years from now. Like it's, that's not my thought. But what it was saying was, how do you see yourself as a human in five mm-hmm. years? Like what position do you want to be in? Right. So Upright. in five, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, um, I want to be the untackiest version of a life coach. Right. Like I even hate that word. So if anyone has a better word than that, but I want to intention teach. coach, intention mm. coach, Trademark. We're trademarking trademark. it. <laughs> you. Sorry. Um, where I can help people basically oh. audit their whole lives. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, industry, but like I'm talking about like auditing financially, um, your daily schedule, your time blocking, everything, right? Because it all comes into play. Mm-hmm. But the end goal is, of course, business, right? So what they say is, okay, well, what would the um, practices of the untackiest version of a life coach do, right? So what I would see is Olivia five years from now, she would, and then you make your list. My list would be, I clean my house before I go to sleep at night because my procrastination is cleaning. I already know that about myself. I'd make my to-do list the night before, and then I would make a priority of those to-do lists to know would be the hardest thing so that when I wake up in the morning, I could have my my regiment, my sacred start, my non-negotiable, right? Which is getting myself ready, taking care of my family or animals, whatever that looks like, and then getting right into my to-do list because I time block my whole life, right? So you write it out and then you assume the role immediately. Assume the role immediately. You assume the role. Whatever she looks like, you assume the role. So once you set those intentions, once you set what that looks like, Mm. that's what creates a quantum leap. Mm -hmm. And that is how you assume your five years immediately. Mm -hmm. How many times do people say, I want to do this. I want to be this. I want to go there. You have to say, well, what would it take to do that, Mm -hmm. to be that, to look like that? Mm -hmm. And then you assume the role immediately. And then you quantum leap. Mm -hmm. So that's the longest version Mm -hmm. of being the person that you want to be and and dressing for the job. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to make, I'm going to make this conversation about me, but only because you touch my soul here. And and, and here's why it's because when I was 35, I think we've talked about, I know we have, like I envisioned the perfect version of me, never with the goal of reaching that perfect version. But what it does is it gives me a guideline that's, he lives right here, by the way, but this is my perfect version, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm always striving for. And this is also not only that, but he's also my accountability buddy. Like you didn't show up, you know, and I don't mean as far as like work and stuff like that, not that, but who are you as a person and who are you Mm -hmm. as, and what do you want to project on the world? And let me be clear. I fail way, way more than I succeed, but I've got this accountability buddy Mm -hmm. right here that's saying like, no, you could have done better in this situation. And this is who I'm striving to be. Mm -hmm. I don't have any intention of meeting that person or, or, or whatever, but, but this is when you're talking about this, this is what goes through my head and to backtrack that. Um, when I listened to Matthew McConaughey take his, uh, uh, when he won the Oscar in oh, his speech, his do you remember speech. that? Yeah. That's what this is to me. He has much more eloquent words than I did, <laughs> but this is like, okay, I'm always striving to be a better version of myself, mm-hmm. you know? And, 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 and it's interesting that you said the five years thing because it immediately kind of moved, it gave space for the bullshit or, or didn't, didn't give space for the bullshit. And like, now you have to hold yourself accountable. Well, that's by this perfect person who doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But it's also like five years moves real quick. Every day, every week, every month. It's like, how do you even get to that if you don't just start today? You know, Mm -hmm. and that, and it's, I don't, I don't like empty promises. I don't like fluff. I don't like bullshit. Mm -hmm. So like, if you say something to me, like I'm going to hold you accountable at that point. And, you know, even leading up to premiere, let's just say, right. Leading up to premiere, I created my intentions. You know, I, I'm trying to set myself up every day for success. I had a lot of anxiety, like a lot of anxiety. Aww. And, and you know what? It's so interesting that you just said all, because I always take 
the things that I hate about myself, because I hate, I used to, right? Mm -hmm. Past tense, hate my anxiety. And then one day I was having a moment and I was meditating and I said, how can I turn hate into love? I actually love my anxiety. My anxiety is what keeps me successful. Mm -hmm. It's what keeps me from not procrastinating. It's what keeps me on my toes and making sure every day I am assuming the role, jumping into position. Because I've noticed that when you start to hate things about yourself, that's when you actually don't do it. But when you love it and you embrace it, that's what's like, all right, Olivia, we have anxiety today. What are we going to do next? It's like season three, you know, like (laughs) where are we at? So that is one personality trait that I've actually, right. We were talking, Mm -hmm. we started this whole conversation out about, you know, how we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you hate something about yourself, figure out a way to fall in love with it. Anxiety is not a bad thing. And I think it shows that you care. Mm -hmm. Like that's why you want to be your, you want to show up as your best self because you care so much. And that's where, you know, that feeling comes from. Uh, And something that I learned uh, through the journey and just what you were speaking about is owning that process and no matter where you're at showing up you got to show up just like you have to step into it I just started training for a marathon because I'm turning 40 and I'm having a midlife crisis but I was scared I had anxiety I was like I want to do this I see other people doing it how do I do it I have zero confidence I don't even think I can even run 20 feet right rather than 26 miles but it was literally one day I was like that's going to be me And I stepped into it, just like Olivia said. And then the confidence comes later. It's the consistency and showing up and appreciating, like appreciating, wow, I'm actually here. I showed up today. I got out of bed. I put my shoes on. It's I'm appreciative of my body and being able to run, even if I'm running, walking, (laughs) walking, running, but it's, it's, it's truly just showing up. And, and now I am that person. Like, so when Olivia says that, I'm like, Dang, she's so great. This is why she's my friend. But Aww. but seriously, it's like you have to, you manifest it, you have your intentions and then showing up. And that takes the most courage mm-hmm. is to show up in that space where you see yourself. And I don't run. So if you see me running, <laughs> you should be running too. <laughs> <laughs> Teach me your ways. <laughs> She's running from something. Yeah. <laughs> She's running. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. Oh, we get tears? <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah. It's the lights, guys. It's the lights. You know, what, me. you know what, though, Tony? I think, aside from me and you, I think Olivia is like the, uh, the, the, the most podcast we've ever done. I think, mm-hmm. is there an award for this? <gasps> I mean, I just said it. That's the award. The podcast award. Podcasting. most streaming most featured there you go. There it doesn't go. have to be in person no it can be whatever okay we got a hat for you can i oh, be the host know. can i be the host <laughs> you were last year of, you dork of, no i'm saying like the host of like oh, of the, the hair awards, uh, yeah. awards yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're there man the mc as an og yeah. the, MC, the, the <laughs> omg the, hair the omg of the hair industry yeah the omg Oh, I like that too. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's intention. Great. What do we get from this intention coach? Mm-hmm. What else? Pet peeves. AI, on stage. OMG. <laughs> pet peeves. Pet peeves. Pet, pet peeves. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for making time because I know that you guys are so busy during this weekend. So I just appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. Appreciate the friendship appreciate and all that both. stuff. I, I get blown away sometimes by the friendships that we have, you know, like, like you guys are saying about like the Babelist team. Like we feel mm-hmm. that all the time, yes. you know, like, like I can't believe. Well, like, I can't believe that I've had dinner with Sam Villa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, just me and him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, like, blows me away. And, like, you know, we had this corny idea in 2018 to start a podcast and that anybody would care. And now, you know, you fast forward a few years and, like, just the tables we've been we've been able to sit at. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just... It's, well, it's you guys incredible. cultivate that connection. Like, you truly do. As hair industry, you cultivate those connections. Like, at the... Where were we? <coughs> Chicago. You're mm-hmm. like, Jamie, you got to meet Morgan. <coughs> you got to meet her. And now I'm friends with her. Like I watched her and I was like, she's incredible. And, I, and now she's my friend. Now you, you guys are just connectors. What legitimately, mm-hmm. and these guys give me a hard time about it, but in a fun way, is like my favorite thing on earth to do is to introduce people. And, and, and if Second I can that. introduce, yeah. and if I can introduce an Olivia fan to Olivia, mm-hmm. that is just 10 times better. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can introduce a Jamie fan to Jamie, that's 10 times better. And like normally what I'll do is I'll go, hey, Jamie, this is my friend so-and-so, and then I'll walk away because I don't need to be a part of it. That's mm-hmm. not what it is. That I don't 
I don't get anything out of that. Mm -hmm. That's not so selfish. But I don't get it. It's just about like, okay, here's the connection. But you know, there's a rule too. And not not with these kind of connections. But like, hey, Olivia, I know that you're looking for an assistant. I know somebody. And at that point, I'm like, my job is to make the introduction. Mm -hmm. If you don't hire her, I have no hard feeling. Yeah, if she's not right. right for the position, I have no hard feeling. You know? Right. Actually, I'm going to talk about something else. You're right? the puzzle master. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I had this conversation with someone earlier and I think it's really important, especially as hairdressers that we have, is that every relationship can run its course. You know, I, I mm -hmm. usually know three months before I lose a client that I'm about to lose a client. I go, oh, this relationship's run its course. I'm going to see it out. I'm not going to kick them out. Mm -hmm. Right? But there doesn't have to be hard feelings with that. We've all seen it in salons. Mm -hmm. Oh, this salon has run its course. You know, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Like, I wish we could get to the point to where it's okay that we run our course. We don't have to talk bad about them. We don't mm -hmm. have to blow shit up. We don't have to, we don't, and so many times you see that, like, this relationship is over, but I need a reason to leave. So now I'm going to start creating reasons to leave. We've seen mm -hmm. that too, right? Mm -hmm. And I wish that we could have a more evolved relationship with those, with, with that, those relationships and just be like, it's run its course. It's over. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. Well, you know? a lot of people just don't know how to be honest. But it's not about and, uh, and some people, honest. and because a lot of people but, don't but no, know no, no, how to no. be Olivia, honest. I disagree with you, actually. Oh my gosh. I wish and, and people were more honest. I don't honest. think it's about honesty. I think it's about like, I think, I think the human experience is we want to blow stuff up so we have a reason to it's own ownership it. too. Um, people want to own mm -hmm. stuff. Like, you know, I helped you. You they owe don't want to, yeah. And they don't want to be in the wrong. They don't want to be the, they look bad or be in the wrong. Yeah. All Let me blow the, this up. Yeah. All that and stuff it's is there, on right? You, not me. How yeah. dare you leave me? And, and, <laughs> and FYI, I'm a thousand percent guilty. Like when I look back and I go, oh, I left that salon. I go, oh, I talked a lot of shit where I probably should not, shouldn't have. <laughs> or I didn't need to. You know what I mean? But it was, it was, a, it's also, it's the same thing that we do as hairdressers. Like, you know what? I'm going to leave. I'm going to bring half the staff with me, right? And it, but it, but it's not about it's not about having the half the staff. It's about like like you said. It's like I'm making the right decision, so I'm going to show everybody. But that's not that's not real. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's not that like it doesn't have to be that way. No. You know. So, anyways, that's my takeaway. You know, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know how I got on that soapbox. I was trying to say goodbye to you guys, but right. <laughs> but I got on that thing. I just wish we could be more evolved as people. You know, I wish I could be more evolved as a person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Same. And then you know, but I, I have to have these thoughts because these keep me honest. Mm -hmm. You know, and they go, "Am I just blowing this up because I want to leave?" Or you look like that like Neanderthal, though. Well, I mean, I can't help that. <laughs> Thank my parents for that shit. <laughs> Thank my old ass parents for that shit. They're both dead. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not going to come back on it. Awesome. Olivia, love you. Jamie, love you more. Love you both. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. Love you both. <laughs> love you. Thank you. Again, where we started, thank you for making time for us. I but know that these things are hard. Before we close out, all right. I mean, yeah, if, if give out your shout outs, how people can find you, what are you doing, what are you up to, what, you know, the social people, people. Yeah. Um, you can find me at Jamie Wiley editorial on Instagram and I'm also on the TikTok. I'm an elder millennial, but I'm trying my best over there. So you can find <laughs> Jamie Wiley hair on the TikTok. Um, but yeah, no, right now I'm really focusing on what my creative heart wants to do. And that, you know, being in the industry where, you know, you're with other people and other brands where you're kind of told what to do. So right now I'm really following my heart and it feels really good. Um, so follow along on my journey on social media. Mm -hmm. Olivia, and, what are you doing? Um, Olivia Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> OMG artistry. <laughs> OMG artistry on Instagram and TikTok. Um, if you talk about Gina Bianca and Gina Bianca, my business partner with educate with influence. If you're looking to be an educator, we're actually coming out with a class. Ooh. Yes. So you can look forward to that. That's on camera and then on stage presence classes as well. So, um, and then also right now, if you love hacks, um, tips, tricks, I'm actually doing like a Mythbuster series right now where you would send me your videos that you have seen and I'm going to start doing myth busting, Whoa. whether the hacks works or not. Mm -hmm. I have one that's coming out next week. It doesn't work. Um, but they're funny. <laughs> they're funny and they're honest, right? Um, so I have does that the water bottle trick work. <clears throat> yes, it does. Yes, it does. The water bottle. If you guys don't know who I am, but you saw that water bottle video <laughs> with the Babeless blow dryer. <laughs> the blow dryer. Um, yeah, that got me 35,000 followers in two weeks. 
weeks. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was yeah. crazy. I was um, there. That was yeah, cool. Yeah, that was cool. Um, but yeah, if you love organization tips for your salon, your suite, um, if you love buying shit on Amazon, I'm your I'm your spot. I'm your girl to watch on Instagram at OMG Artistry. You are a killer, mm-hmm. my friend. I love you. you. And I love you, Jamie, mm-hmm. so much. And I'm so glad I get to share the stage with you and my team. Well, we always have a stage here at a round table that you can that you can share together. We'd love to have you guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Jamie and Olivia, thanks for hanging out and thank you very, very much for joining us on your day. And see. Dude. And see. Yeah. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.